Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Innovative Outreach Engagement Tactics for Increased Enrollment. My name is Srijana Pakhre, and I have been working with BMC Technologies since past three and a half years now, and I am your host for today's live session. Uh, before we dive into the exciting content, let me express our gratitude for your presence here. It's fantastic to see so many professionals who have joined us today. Some of you might be familiar with MQ, while others might be stepping into the realm of cloud telephony solutions for the first time. Regardless, I am thrilled to have each and every one of you here present. MQ, uh, we are a leading provider of cloud telephony services that helps businesses drive growth and improve efficiencies. You'll be able to better manage all of your business calls. Our suite of services includes IVR solution, soft phone solution, auto dialer. We also provide WhatsApp services, OBD, voice blast, and SMS services. Before we dive into these topics, let us meet our esteemed speaker, Anju Jairaj, Director of Outreach and Marketing at Rishi Hoth University. Also, she is an education marketing strategist, outreach and admission specialist, and also a public speaker. Anju has over 14 years of rich experience in education sector across business turnarounds, digital communications and branding, career counseling, international education counseling and startup consulting. She has delivered guest lectures on topics like social entrepreneurship within and outside organizations, changing face of Indian education, entrepreneurial mindset of new age professionals understanding the importance of branding and communications and others in top institutions and organizations. Today, Anju Jairaj, our speaker, will share her expertise on cutting edge outreach strategies, proven engagement tactics, and also real world success stories that have led to significant increase in the enrollment numbers. Okay, before I pass it on over to Anju, uh, I would like to inform all of the attendees that we have a Q&A session as well uh, at the end of the webinar. Would request each one of you to use the Q&A option below as well as chat option and uh, to ask your questions. Uh, over to you, Anju. Thank you so much, Srijana. Um, and thank you so much to MQ as well to find me worthy enough to take this session. Uh, specifically for professionals. Usually when I'm taking sessions with students, I don't like using PPTs. Uh, I, I, you know, normally my stance with them is that if you see the PPT, how will you see me? But I guess uh, with professionals, we can look at, since we're talking about strategies, we're talking about multiple other things as well. Um, something of a deck would be fine. But before I start off, uh, I'm hoping that the chat box is open for all of you all. Um, and I've received a brief on your profiles in general, but in case if you could just take in two minutes to put down on the chat box with respect to what are your current roles, you know, what organizations, what are the current roles you have. So I think accordingly, I can steer through my conversation with you as well. So just a shout out on the chat box, if you can just put in uh, there with respect to what your current roles are, uh, it'll be really helpful. Shrijana, is the chat box open for the attendees? If not, I think we should so just host a small poll so I could understand your views as well before I could go ahead and deep dive into uh, outreach as such. Mipla, can we host the poll for everyone? Yeah, I just launched it. Yes, you have some time, maybe 10 seconds. That's what we tell students or maybe 20, 30, 40, maybe a minute. If you could just go through this quickly so that we could have the uh, you know poll results on our screens as well and we see how we are viewing outreach and enrollments uh, for ourselves. Shall I end and you this? Can maybe publish yeah, yeah, you can publish the results also so we can just find out a little bit. I'll share the result. Sure. Okay, a lot of you say that the challenges is lack of increased quality. All right, lack of measured outcomes, 
stagnancy in the number of enrollments is not a big deal for a lot of you all all right then let's see the other one. the other one is for visibility strong source of conversions mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we still have 3% of the people who think outreach is just a waste of time and resource. Okay, thank you so much for this. Uh, I think I have a general sense of where you all come in from. Um, so I've been doing university outreach or B-school outreach uh, and marketing for about 15 years now. And I think one thing that I've understood across the years, whether it was when, uh, you know, uh, when I joined one of the peer universities like Waxon, at that time it was only Waxon School of Business. We were just starting out. We were just deciding what color carpet should be there in the, you know, in the main campus and so on and so forth. Uh, so whether it was Waxon, which was a startup, or it was a university like Flame with I, that I was associated with for about five years, fairly established organization, uh, outreach has been part of our entire cycle for a long time. And going through the years, what I realize now is that uh, constantly I find a lot of my peers in the industry questioning the relevance of what we do in outreach. If you agree with me or disagree with me, you can just put it on the chat box. I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. I anyway can't see you, uh, which is a deterrent. But in case if you think this is the, uh, you know, this is the particular way in which we can look at outreach as such, what are the sort of activities that we are doing? Uh, what are the sort of engagement that we are planning? Is Does it even have meaning? I think there are multiple conversations that are hovering around that. And through the years, uh, a lot of you all are from the university or the B-schooling setup. So you will also realize that there are certain components in outreach which are very standardized. We just need to ensure whether they're impactful or not. Um, Ramesh says, are we going to discuss about schools in specific for outreach program? No, Ramesh, uh, not necessarily schools, but more or less and, uh, you know, what sort of engagement programs can you build if you are, let's say, a university or an institution and if you're building those programs, uh, you know, with the school as well. So we'll, we'll just look at maybe a couple of uh, options there and then see how, I mean, I, I don't think um, I, I'm here as much to learn from you all as much as it is from the other way around. So I think we can keep that um, that way as well. So I'm going to share my screen a little bit and then uh, move on to the next things. So first things first, before I even you know start to share the screen, uh, what do you think should be the main focus of an outreach manager or you know when you're building an outreach strategy for a university or for a school? Either ways, right? There is a there is an outreach strategy for schools as well that is in place. What do you think should be the main focus uh, for anyone building that strategy? And again, you can use the Q&A box itself because I think the chat is still disabled. Yes, anyone with any answers, I'd love to see, see them as well. What do you think should be the first and foremost focus for any particular person while building an outreach strategy? We've realized what is outreach. Some of you had mentioned that, you know, it's it's building long-term connections. Some of you have mentioned that it's a source of, you know, leads, a source of conversions for us as well. Uh, some maybe even for thought leadership. But what is the first focus when you are building an outreach strategy? What do you think should be my first focus when I'm building something, when I'm developing engagement programs, when I'm trying to see where my budgets need to go as well? Target audience, okay. Visibility would be a certain pointer. All right, thank you, Dipali and Ramesh. Um, identifying the target audience should be the first focus. Okay, okay. All right. Um, I feel, and what has helped me a lot is target audience. Identifying the target audience is part of the is the first part of the process for sure. Yes. So, what are my programs? Who are they going to appeal? Um, have I done any survey? Have I done any study while I'm launching the program or while I'm going to the market? That is necessary. That's the that's the first step of the process. But I think when you're building the strategy, um, the strategy needs to be focused from a perspective that whatever I'm going to do, right, whatever activities that I'm going to engage, what is the sort of value that I'm going to provide to my stakeholders? Now, who are my stakeholders? And I'm talking again from a university perspective. As a university, who are my stakeholders? My stakeholders are predominantly my student, my learner, who has to be at the center of everything. Uh, because I think if if the student is not at the center of everything, I see a lot of institutions, a lot of my peers, 
constantly grappling with the uh, you know with the puzzle that you know I have very restricted budgets and xyz tells me that these are the five things 10 other people are doing these five things and I think I should go ahead and just do them uh, maybe necessary from a visibility perspective but not necessarily from an engagement and an outcome perspective so I think the first focus you know large picture a larger goal for us needs to be that whatever interactions that I create uh, is there enough value for someone to actually build through that? I'm I'm going to show you a small ad right now. Uh, you know, before I take you through the deck, this is not uh, this is not uh, related anywhere to education. This is not related to education. It's an ad for a different FMCG product, but I think the messaging is very simple with respect to the sort of numbers that they were able to also see once the ad campaign was launched. And maybe we can discuss that a little bit uh, at your end. So just give me one minute. Let me see. This is why I should use more PPTs. I sometimes feel. Okay. Please let me know on the Q&A or likewise, if you're able to see the screen. <laughs> No, 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 no. Can you see the screen right now? Great mysteries. Wow. This is one of the. Yes. Can you see the screen right now? With if you can just give me a heads up on Q and A. Yes. All right. Fine. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Um. I want you to go through this ad very well because it just showcases the value that we were talking about. And then we'll see how we can build very similar value propositions for our uh, learners and for our stakeholders within, you know, within our segment as well. This is one of the world's great mysteries. and shaking your ketchup bottles. Now, the company is shaking up its labels. This is a new Heinz bottle with a crooked label. Yeah, they're passing the secret along to you. All you have to do is tilt the bottle so the label is straight. That's the angle you want. Then, voila, the perfect pouring angle. Ta-da, out comes the ketchup. Pretty clever, though. It is clever. Yeah. with other brands of ketchup. Okay, that was Heinz Ketchup for you, one of the most innovative brands that have come across uh, the years. Can someone help you identify um, what was the problem and what is the value that the brand has provided for? Anyone? So I have just a few, uh, just two questions for everyone. You know, what is the problem? that the customers had and what is the brand trying to sort? What is the value with this? Someone's raised a hand, Anoop. Okay, Anoop, uh, let me, I, I can't. Can someone also let Anoop uh, talk? Because I don't have the right, so make me the co-host so that I can just you know, manage this on my own as well. We can have Anoop's uh, audio activated. Okay. Problem was getting the sauce out of the bottle. Innovation solution for a simple problem. Customers were struggling to pour out the ketchup properly. Yes. So that's pretty, pretty uh, much true. My entire, the entire problem, uh, you know, condition there was that the sauce was not coming out of the bottle. Yes, Anup, if you can just unmute yourself. 
Are you there? Okay. I don't think Anup is there, but that's okay. All right. So, yes, the problem was very simple that mostly, and I think all of us have gone through this, that when you're using a ketchup bottle, it's very difficult to get the ketchup on, on right. Now, if I, as a brand, go ahead and say, oh, we figured out the entire solution, and the solution is that 31 degrees is the angle in which you will pour ketchup and the ketchup can come down, is that going to help any one of you? Let's say I'm Heinz Ketchup, and I've realized this, I've done my research, I have figured out that 31 degrees is the is the angle in which you need to pour the ketchup. Will that, as a customer, help you? Does that information, does that piece of information really help you? Yes, Raghav says, okay, problem for ketchup. It doesn't help us. Absolutely. So you can, I can tell you 31 degrees. It's the same way if I draw a parallel and say that, okay, fine, you know what? You're a school student, you're a school counselor, uh, or you're a university professional and I'm a school counselor. Either ways, uh, the problem that you're facing is that you're not able to enrich your profile. So profile building is the answer for you to go ahead and get proper college applications or get into really good universities. That's what I've told them. Is that thing going to help the student? Will that really help the student? We go to career fairs, a lot of us, you and I, have, you know, there are so many of us I've probably met each other in multiple career fairs, multiple university fairs, presentations, workshops, and everywhere else. And mostly when I hear a lot of my peers, it's the same thing that, you know what, if you have to get into a good college application, if you have to build your college application, if you have to get into a good university, we tell the child that you need to build your profile. You need to bulk up your entire, uh, you know, entire uh, application. But what next? How does he do that? So that how does he do that? is the way that Heinz Ketchup actually said, the 31 degrees, yes, but that's all okay, bros. But how do I actually pour the ketchup? So they just put the tilted label so that when the label is right, you can get the ketchup salt. Now, as brands, as even education brands, and I feel that in India, education is still highly unstructured. Uh, in a lot of ways, we are still yet to achieve the structure and uh, you know the way that the organization that a lot of corporates have today. Uh, but having said that, smaller things like identifying the problem, but also be able to give a very easy, easy, accessible solution for it should be at the forefront of every outreach strategy that we are building. And I think um, that's what is key when we are trying to build anything across, uh, you know, across the year. So there are a lot of colleges and institutions that I see, even age old institutions that have been there for 30, 40 years, 50 years. We are, um, you know, there are institutions that say that, okay, fine, listen, what I have students coming in. I really don't have a problem for enrollment. I'm okay. There's quality happening. Quality is incremental. That's all fine. But then, you know what, Anju, students, jo hai, uh, my students are going to wake up only after their board exams. So let me start planning all outreach and everything only from the months of April, May, June. How many of you agree that this happens or don't agree? I'm sure a couple of universities that I know of plan it ahead, but a lot of universities specifically in India, from an Indian university concept, we start planning engagement and outreach only in April, May, June, July. Now understand from the student's perspective, he's out of his boards. All he's doing is only meeting universities and universities and colleges and institutions everywhere. All of them trying to have a very small window of three months and saying that, listen, you know what? Take this bandwidth, take this value, and then come and join my college. I don't think that is sustainable. I don't think that adds value. And I don't think that can ever help anyone achieve a certain measurable or you know gain certain measurable outcomes out of an outreach strategy. Outreach has to be consistent. Outreach has to be year-long. Outreach is, is not dependent on what is the timeline when the student is going to be active in the market. Yes, the type of activities that you do will change depending on when the student is you know, available or when not, when the counselor is available, when not, or vice versa, whichever way that we're looking at. But it has to be a consistent activity. So if you're someone who's still building outreach strategies for a very short timeline, and we think that, okay, fine, you know what, give and take, three months, and that's about it, uh, uh, you know, uh, it'll be good. Uh, Ramesh says, how do we measure that if it is year long? Ramesh, we'll, we'll look into that as well. What sort of metrics that you can sort of build in? Uh, let me again quickly just look at sharing a small deck and then we can have our discussion. 
Okay. So I've just put into perspectives because a lot of you all, when I when I saw the uh, profiles earlier, but also from schools or from institutions as such. And I think the prime goals for us to be achieved, and I think these are goals that you need to pen down, right? Um, many a times as institutions, we say, okay, fine, outreach cycle, ye aapka budget hai. please go ahead and start working through. And the topmost, you know, topmost things that we do is, okay, fine, we have to do a career fair. We have to get into schools, do a workshop there. Uh, we should partner with someone and maybe do a workshop there as well. We should partner in an independent fair and then, you know, fairs which come in and say that, okay, fine, you're going to come in, you're going to be 30,000 students are going to have a footfall to come inside and then build it. Should I participate? Maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on what is the outcome that you're planning. Fine. So these outcomes are something that you need to list out. As universities, some of them that I've identified are with counselor engagement, parent engagement, conversions, of course, thought leadership. A lot of activities need to be planned, not from a perspective of, uh, you know, not from a perspective of only conversions and only leads, but I think more from a perspective of building your thought leadership. Unless and until uh, my client, my consumer is not able to understand where I come from, what is my offering, how will it add value to their lives, um, they're not going to engage with you beyond a certain point of time. So thought leadership is extremely important. And of course, lead generation, whether it's qualitative or quantitative. Uh, Ramesh, I'm going to take your question towards the end once I'm done with this and then we can look at uh, but, but I'm just looking at your question just now. Da, 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 yes, yes. Your your point is right and I think that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of universities don't achieve the outcomes that they're looking at. Uh, Data-driven decision-making in the Indian context specifically is very limited and that needs to be done and not just for the past year but I think you need to do mapping for two or three trends. Similarly, coming back to this, uh, for counsellors, if there are any school counsellors here, and I think a few of you had written that you were school counsellors as well, why am I doing a career fair in the first place? Is it because, oh, there is a school right next to me, they're going, doing a college fair, they're doing a university fair, they're calling 40, 50 universities, I'm going to do that as well. Is it competition? Is it because it gives you a green signal, green tick on your resumes and on your profiles that you've conducted universities, or are we actually building some worthy interactions for all of them, and and I don't blame uh, you know anyone out here, because a lot of my interactions with counselors have been that there is a large set of awareness that needs to go within the counseling community as well. That's a very small community even today for the number of students that we have in the country. So certain goals like college awareness, what is my preparedness? What are my opportunities that a child can go for? Um, can the child look at study destinations? If my entire cohort of students is someone who only wants to study in India as higher education, then I don't think you should be bothering to go ahead and call a lot of international universities today. Maybe first sensitize your students towards international university engagements and then call them on. I think that particular pattern of course, scholarships and financial aid, certain goals that you can uh, sort of look at. Now, this is something that I had created for my own metrics and there are multiple activities. I've just put down some of them uh, that I usually do in my outreach uh, calendar. But having said that, there are there are many more activities that you can add up based on your objectives, based on what sort of programs your university or your institution is offering. Uh, also based on what is your student profile. I think that's important. So this is just a matrix that I can, and this really, really helps me a lot. This is a metrics that I prepare every year at the end of the year, in fact, quarterly, every three months we do this, looking at the data that we have, whether it's career fairs or independent fairs that we are doing, whether it's school workshops, whether it's university tester programs or you know profile building programs that we conduct, what is the sort of impact? And when I say impact, there are two levels, there are two ways in which you can look at impact. Impact can be looked at one way is, uh, of course, the number of applications or the number of leads. Leads, I feel, is immaterial unless and until you can't really contribute to something very meaningful. But then, yes, number of applications that I'm getting in for my uh, institution. Um, and at the same time, also, what is the sort of awareness? What is the engagement that I have? Do I have, what is, you know, uh, in, a lot of you may be using CRMs as well. Now, CRMs usually have a lead age, you know, a, a certain lead age by when the lead actually came into your funnel and by when they actually get converted. Look at that lead age. Look at the sort of engagement that you have. 
Do you have more? We often stress our outreach profession, not just outreach, even our counselors within universities that, you know, follow up and follow up and follow up, call up, do 100 calls in a day, do a 200 calls in a day. I know of institutions where there are call centers set up at large scales where the entire work for admissions enrollments is being driven only by telecalling. It is important. There's no doubt about that. Telecalling is important, but it has to be counseling. It cannot be just a sales push on a call saying, hi, I'm from this university. This is the program that we have. Can you please do it? The child is not interested. So measure your outcomes in terms of also what is the engagement from the student? Your CRMs, whatever CRMs that you use, have ways in which you are able to map. That technology gives you a mapping that, okay, fine, this kid has opened your brochure. This kid has opened your email. This kid has actually sent your WhatsApp back to go ahead and inquire about certain things. How is it can I make my counselors, my outreach professionals so effective in, in their delivery of the programs, in, in um, you know communicating about the program and the intent of the university in such a manner that the kid actually comes up and follows up with me because then it becomes a conversation. It's not really, you know, telecalling and I'm not really chasing numbers and we're not constantly looking at just number, number. It's never a numbers game in that sense. Um, so we need to, uh, we need to make this, this is something that I'd like to share with you as well. Make this matrix at the end of every quarter. I would advise to try and see that are my activities actually giving me some, some of these engagement activities that I found to be very, very useful have been our learner-led buddy programs or one-to-one -one consults uh, that we usually schedule. Now, outreach is not just about going and participating in an activity. It is also about how we are engaging our students or our parents or counselors, whichever way that they have to go ahead. And every interaction that you have with someone has to add certain value. If that value proposition is in mind, I think it's fine. It's a very simple example. If I'm building a university page today on social media, why would someone come in and look at my university page? Why do you think should someone come in? I'm saying, okay, fine, I have this fantastic program. Yeah, my faculty is the best. I have faculty from all the Ivy League colleges and they've curated this lovely program or they're going to come and talk to you about building innovation strategies. Why should you actually come in and join me? Or if I'm putting up this poster on, on social media, why should someone come in and actually see this? Does it make it any relevant for my student to come in and discover a brand like that? Do you really think Instagram works? I'm just asking a lot of questions. So in case if there are any answers, I'd love to hear them out as well. Do you think that a lot of people, a lot of us as institutions, we keep engaging, we keep pushing content on our Insta pages, LinkedIn pages, so many pages. Do you think that it really, really makes sense? What is it in our content that will make a, a student or a counselor or a parent come back again and again to us? What do you think would be something of that sort? Yes, no, yes, no. Anything on the chat box also, if you can try, if it is already open. Instagram works only if the content is, is relevant. Ripali, but what do you mean by relevant content? What is relevant? How do you decide? Let's say we are talking about a student profile. Okay, I'm not looking at counselors nor parents. I'm saying that I want to target my target audience is just the students that I want to capture. What do you think is the content that the child will actually come again and again to my page for? Yes, anyone else as well? Student-centric information. So... Um, the two kinds of information that I can have, let's say uh, student centric information is that I put out a post on, you know, uh, campus life, or I put out a post on XYZ program is happening or XYZ guest lecturer is coming onto my campus. And uh, he taught us XYZ, you know, ABC things. So this leader of a particular company came to our campus and he, uh, you know, he taught our students and he gave us valuable insights on A, B, C, D, E things. Now, do you think, is that student-centric information, do you think that is an information that is content that a child will come again and again and again back to you? Student life in the university, result-oriented contests and expert information. Let's look at the student profile. Why is he coming to you? He has Google. Let's all agree on this, whether as outreach professionals or whether we are faculty, um, 
anyone for us, for that matter, we are mere facilitators today. Our student has changed drastically. Today, I don't have to teach a child what is accounting. He can Google and find out. There are multiple ways in which he can figure it out, right? We are mere facilitators. But if he is coming to a facilitator, that is when he needs add-on of knowledge. So if I am putting out, let's say, a maker's program or a program which is focused on startups and entrepreneurship, and I want more students who are of that bent of mind, I need more students who are more driven towards starting, uh, you know, um, an entrepreneurship uh, company or, you know, starting up their own on, on their own. If I'm looking to attract that sort of a child, don't you think my content should be, should it be a leadership session that I had on campus or should it be content which says that, you know what, these are five things that you can do to go ahead and uh, build a startup very quickly. Or, you know, these are five things that you need to do uh, technology wise in case if you're looking at becoming an entrepreneur, which content do you think will be the first one or the second one? Insights about career opportunities. Yes, Jonah, that uh, career opportunities definitely is also something that we can figure out. Yes, so I'm, I'm guessing that mostly a student, from a student's perspective, a student will probably have more adherence to me and there is a necessity for the child to come again and again to my platform only when they're able to get more relevant content for them. I'm trying to become a startup entrepreneur this particular university in their career fair, when I went to their desk, they handed out a small piece of information, a small information card, which had, you know, 10 tips, a, a startup kit that said that, okay, fine. If you're starting up, these are the things that you need to be prepared for. That's value add that he'll remember you for. He's not going to remember you for the brochures and the flyers and the information program information that you're going to give. Building relevant content is important. So while we're doing this and while we're also trying to build enough information for students to consume, we should on a quarterly basis look at the sort of engagement that we are planned and how, uh, what is the sort of impact that they're creating? Am I connected with this student? A good way would be, do I get my child to, you know, do I get these students to subscribe to a YouTube channel and see whether my YouTube is going up one after the other, every time I engage, have an engagement, uh, you know, in the city or wherever that I'm going. Or uh, do I have more people engaging with me, commenting on my posts? That would be a good measure to look at value, qualitative impact. Quantitative impact, obviously, is the applications or the number of leads that we are going to be uh, looking at as well. Great. The chat is active now and I can see a lot of you chatting there. All right. So that is in terms of value addition. And naturally, a uh, lot of brands also that I see across and, and I do consult with a few others outside. Rishi is my full-time space, but I do consult with a lot of other organizations as well. Where we fail to do is, oh, we've done so much mehnat. I've traveled by train and bus and flight and everything to go to a school fair or a career fair in the eastern sector and northeast. Wonderful interaction I had with my students. You know, there were some 30, 40, 50 kids who came to my desk. I had a lovely conversation. They took a lot of value. I've collected leads and then it's dead. And post that, what happens? You come back, you give your counselor the lead database saying, boss, ye leads hai. Ye sara 12th standard hai. Ye sara 11th standard hai. You talk to the 12th standard group, get the applications done. What if the student, we all, all of us have, have faced this issue day in and day out. Students don't pick up calls. They get a thousand calls universities and institutions have spent money and money and money on white labeling on giving true color give good enough money so that you know we do we are not spammed across when people call on our phones so many things we keep changing numbers you know every team if there are seven people in the team there are some 21 mobile numbers because we know someone's going to spam all of this is happening but is there an easier way and the easier way would be how do i creep in with a good digital strategy to go ahead and look at these kids. So building your leads and an immediate this thing, you know, a lot of times what backfires is that I've gotten the lead today, but maybe I'm remarketing on those leads only after 15, 20 days. 15, 20 days later, we did that career fair. We did that career fair. We did that You know, there are people with the 12th standard game. Let's also use that for our digital ads. Digital ads are not separate. You have to go and get ahead and go ahead and build a very strong digital strategy. So if you have a separate team for digital, 
sit with them, build that strategy with them. Boss, this is what I'm going to do. These are the places that I'm going to go. Can I have immediate, you know, showcase for the places that I'm going to go? Can I have more people going ahead? And I'm not saying chasing, but at least relevant content being shown to these students who've given me their interest in terms of, you know, connecting with us as an institution. And also identifying relevant platforms. Um, one one stunt or, you know, one particular, um, what do you say, a rider that I've seen with a lot of outreach professionals and a lot of institutions as well, very sadly, is that we are very averse as outreach professionals. We're very averse to, uh, we know five things. Everyone's doing Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Snapchat. All of us are too old for Snapchat, I feel. Uh, and we, we are like still making sense of that platform. A lot of us are still on Facebook only. So we are like, yeah, five, four or five platforms are there, digital strategies done. Just post on them, just send out invitations on them. And I think that is, you know, done. We don't have to do anything else. That is my digital strategy. Give your agencies, you know, crores and crores of money so that they can run ads on Google and run ads on Meta and everywhere else. They'll give you a lot of leads. You sit on call on leads and leads will convert to applications admission. That's the run that we're doing day in and day out. We are not innovating there. But can I innovate a little bit with identifying relevant platforms? Now, for example, if you look at a platform like uh, Pinterest, right? And you have a program which has been designed. You have a design program. You have a platform like Pinterest. A lot of these kids are highly engaged with that platform when they're looking in for small comic strips, when they're looking in for small image visualizations. Can I do something with them? Can I work somewhere with a Pinterest? If I have a program, which is a business program, which is highly focused, can I look at, uh, you know, uh, can I look at content marketing with platforms like maybe Medium, maybe the Ken? I'm getting students today. In fact, one, just today morning, I had a kid who's applied with us for a business program. And I was in general wanting to understand, you know, what is the source of understanding about various startups, investments, how does money come in, venture capitalists. He was very, very, very well learned. Um, and he said, ma'am, I, I read, I've subscribed to the Ken. I've subscribed to the Medium. I read a lot of their articles. You and I will not even think that a class 11, 12 student could actually do that. But the generation is very, very far ahead and they, their, their content consumption is so far. So can I find out these relevant platforms based on the program that I'm sending out? Not that I have a lot of budget. Hai, bhai. Two crore rupees given to xyz.com. They will put listing. They will put my name on top. They will give me 1,000, 10,000 leads and my team will only call and then go ahead and work. That's not going to happen. Content marketing, again, something very, very important. And it is not only restricted to digital professionals. Please, content marketing is necessary for outreach. When I say encourage personal branding, it's a, there's, there's enough data in, in a lot of fields, not just within education, but in a lot of fields, that when a person talks about a brand and when the brand talks about itself, there are more number of clients who will subscribe to the brand because of that person and not because of the brand. LinkedIn now, we start to see a lot of standardized posts because courtesy chat GPT, all of us have become Shachi Tharoor in a lot of ways. Um, everyone's uh, everyone's answers are, you know, really long format, five pointers. So it, it, you can see whether it's chat GPT or yours. Definitely use it. It's technology. You should use it if, you're, if your written communication is not very strong. But try and see that can I add a twist in respect to what is the perspective? Push through for your brand on your LinkedIn pages. If it's on a LinkedIn page, push through on your LinkedIn page that, boss, this is what I did. This is what my reflections were when I went ahead and engaged with someone on this particular platform. I think that's necessary. The more you talk about your brand, there are higher chances that people will listen to you than actually going to your brand's LinkedIn page and subscribing from there. Personal branding is important, not just as a professional individually, but also you know for the organization as such. And like I mentioned, remarketing. Uh, a lot of other tools, CRMs, of course, um, CRMs can be used so robustly, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's tracking down what they've opened, what sort of Insta post have they seen? Have they seen my LinkedIn post? What is the viewership? What is the engagement that the kid has? And accordingly, tweak your communication and your conversation with that kid. That's important. But also platforms like Discord. None of us, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of us don't even know that there is a platform called Discord. 
But you look at any grade 11, grade 12 student today, they are engaging with each other on platforms like Discord, exchanging notes on games, game design, multiple things. Can I create a channel there? Can I create a community on WhatsApp? Can I create a community on Instagram? One of my favorite pages to follow is this page called Masala Lab. I do it because I have an interest in cuisines and uh, you know a lot of things to do with gastronomy. But uh, if you look at that page, and we're trying to see if I can replicate that for the university as well, fantastic content, short content. Krisha Show goes ahead and just debunks multiple myths about cooking, cooking devices, you know, food, everything. And then now Instagram has given us an opportunity to build a community, have a subscription model. So he says, okay, fine. You like my 10 second video. If you want the one hour, the freemium model that we say, you can subscribe to my channel and then go ahead and pay for it. There are so many ways. And I think that's necessary that with outreach that has to go, it can't be different timelines. Boss, it can't be that I have outreach and I have to Now let me do digital. And last one is the most important part is building a learning repository. Um, your brand build or your institution's build is not going to happen uh, only and only because the child subscribed to you for applications or admissions. Yes, that is important and that is the core of all of our jobs, right? Any outreach professional is uh, evaluated on how much did your market grow, what percentage, what numbers. That's what defines all of us. But that's not the only thing. You should have, a, for a longer engagement, if you look at most of the very focused schools that are doing some brilliant work with respect to their students, they would advise you that, boss, if you want my 12th standard kid to come in and join you, start working with that kid when the kid is in grade 9, grade 10, not when the kid is in grade 12. Most of us in outreach go ahead and go like a maniac to all of these schools saying, which are 12th standard ka bachcha de Obsession there are 11th and 12th. How many will be 12th? 12th is Dada, to mein Nahi to I'll not come. Right? So that value proposition you need to build with that school earlier. So I have longer term learning repositories for them. Try and see that can I build and every every thing. If you're a tech institution, then tech wise, build certain learning repositories that can be helpful for the child as well, as well as for the school in terms of everything. And finally, yes, measuring outcomes. I was in a discussion very recently in a panel discussion with a lot of leaders from international education. And I asked them that, you know, all of you all international education people, you all deal with international education universities. What is the one thing that you think we as Indian universities and Indian institutions, we don't do? What is the one thing that we don't do? And you think it's the best practice that we should look at? So I got two. One answer was that Anju, Indian universities do not do data driven decision making. Everything is intuitive. Everything is ad hoc. Inka pakad is pe baut achcha hai. To ye ye karenge. Aur wo wale sir ko ye wale partners zada pasand hai. To hum partners zada karenge. Ye wale sir ko school outreach mein zada connect hai. To hum school outreach zada karenge. We're not looking at data properly. So data on what are my feeder schools for last year. What are my geographies. More importantly, what is my student profile. Who is the one who's finally taken an admission with me. What sort of family background. What sort of income background. What sort of exposure is the child someone who goes on a travel a holiday, travel to Italy every year, or he's a child who's actually spent a lot of time in building his own profile, has done smaller program certification courses. Likewise, understanding the student profile, that's important so that you can boil down that every year, your outreach budget can come down if you're very, very fruitfully getting it done. And of course, also understanding what are my low outcome schools, geographies, um, when I'm looking at a career fair, a lot of us debate that, oh, school ka career fair, you know, schools come in and tell me a lot of times that, Anju, yeah, we are not even charging you anything. You know, why can't you just come in and participate in the career fair? Because it will help my students. Now, while I want to go and participate in the career fair, because it will help their students, I also have to understand about my resource and my skill investment. And I have to understand about my cost investment, right? So how can that be done? Can I convince a couple of schools in an area to conduct a career fair in that entire week so that my cost implications are taken care of? My resource is only one. I'm not spending so much, right? So an event which charges us also an independent fair which says, Ki, Anju, only 20,000 rupees, you can come and get access to 30,000 students. Boss, for 20,000, banner lagao, branding, karo, fabrication, karao. Uske le brochure leke jao, bande ko bhejo. Ek se hoga nahi, do page na, three page na hai. So you have to spend two or three people there. Um, you need to get your collaterals, engagement activities, everything, everything, everything put together. 
all of that is an investment. That analysis needs to be done on a quarterly basis. And more importantly, your feedback from stakeholders. Um, as a school, I've done these engagement activities. What is your feedback for me? What is your feedback for as an institution? With students, what is the feedback we've done? You know, you can run out a survey. It's so simple. You don't even have to go and talk to everyone. But even if we can just run out a small survey stating that, boss, you know what, this year, thank you so much. You engaged with us in a taster program. You engaged with us in a design day. You engaged with us in XYZ programs. Do you think you'd like to do more? Do you think they were useful for you? This feedback is necessary. And this data-driven decision-making helps us a lot in cutting down the clutter, not wasting our energies. This is my favorite slide, and I'm not going to take more. Oh, I'm already almost six. So let me try and see if I'll have time for some questions as well. Empower the outreach professional. Um, for the last two, two and a half, three years, now that I've moved from communications, outreach, admissions, multiple other uh, roles as well, um, one very sad reality that I see with a lot of my uh, peers in outreach is that many a times in institutions, we look at outreach professionals as merely people who are there to go ahead and collect data. Oh, he's an outreach guy. He's supposed to go. He's supposed to go train, bus, bell, gadi, everything. Go to a school. His job is only to collect data and come back. Uske baad aur kuch uska value nahi hai. Um, I think we need to change that narrative in case if you're looking at more outcomes and more innovation within the outreach space as well. Um, why do we have to own? So we have a large faculty pool that is fantastic. We should take our faculty everywhere as much as possible when we are taking them to a school for presentations because the faculty's perspective is very different when they're talking to students. But it's not feasible all the time. You and I have always faced this situation where there's a semester happening, there's an exam happening, faculty is not available, but I have a session on entrepreneurship to be delivered. I have a session on business to be delivered. Can I not train subject specifically my particular outreach professionals to go ahead and deliver? Have some value. Give them some value. Give them some more value in their own jobs. Why are most of our outreach professionals meant to think that yeah, my job is just to take a seat, take a seat, take a seat, take and I have to go ahead and just get data. No, not necessary. Can I not build that? So if you are an outreach leader, please build this within your strategy, as a strategy, not as a separate. Budget it in within your budget. If necessary, sit with your leadership and say that, okay, fine, boss, X, Y, Z is my budget, 10% of it. I want to invest in training my team, subject-specific areas, training my team on using various technological areas. Can I do a menti.com? and go ahead and create a quiz for someone who comes at a career fair stall with me and actually plays that and has more engagement. Can I train my student or can I train my particular uh, team member to use a virtual reality product so that he can showcase that to a student when we, we have an interaction? Build your outreach professional skill. I think that and that alone can help you build a lot of other innovative ways as well in which you can take up. And I would like to end that students have to be at the center of everything. So thank you so much. If there are any questions, I'm not sure whether this has been helpful to any of you all or uh, it's something that you've already known. But if there are any other questions, I'd love to take them up as well. Thank you so much. Srijana, over to you and Biplam. Yes, Anju, we have received a few questions off offline as well. I will just okay. quickly put it out. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a very, the first question is very interesting by Dr. Sunil Agarwal, People's Institute mm -hmm. of Management and Research. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is how we can differentiate between general marketing strategy and admissions marketing strategy. Hmm. So I think that's a discussion between brand building as well as uh, admissions marketing. Uh, from an admissions marketing, I think, like I mentioned, the center becomes, of course, student as the center for everything. What is the value that they are drawing as well? But you have to keep your numbers and your, um, you know, final count in your conversion rates uh, in check. So measuring your performances and measuring your activities in a quarterly way or a half yearly way, whichever, whatever suits your organization, that will help you build a good admission strategy. Also, a lot of places that I see is our admission criteria and that the way that we are, you know, selecting students, that itself is not very structured. You know, we go, okay, fine. 
वी हैव टू हैव अ फाइव हंड्रेड का इंटेक लेट्स टेक ऑल ऑफ देम लेट्स गिव ऑल ऑफ देम दिस किड लुक्स नाइस इसका प्रोफाइल अच्छा है एवरीथिंग इज नाइस वी टॉकन टू द वी स्पोकन टू द पेरेंट वी स्पोकन टू द स्टूडेंट एंड वी से ओके फाइन आई थिंक दिस शुड गेट यू नो फिफ्टी परसेंट थिंग सो लेट्स हैव मोर स्ट्रक्चर देर वॉट आर द वेटेज इज इफ यू नीड वी कुड डू वर्कशॉप ऑन यू नो हाउ यूर बिल्डिंग एन एडमिशन सिलेक्शन क्राइटेरिया have your counselors make your school counselors go through that admission selection criteria so that they understand that this is how the admissions will work and therefore you can also understand which are the schools that need to target so admission marketing will be a little different at the overall marketing the general marketing part that has to be a whole different focus altogether that focus is on building your thought leadership so what are my activities how much can i get my written content out whether it's long format whether it's you know short format what are engagement maybe there are certain identify certain platforms and conferences uh, where it's important for your leadership to go uh, along with you and present the ideology of the university the ideas of the university the entire value system that the university or the institution is building i think that becomes your general marketing part so outreach is is going to be a whole different budget so if you're from a budgeting perspective if you really need it maybe you can have a certain segment uh, i would i would i would say that out of let's say a uh, 100 you know quantum of a budget you should have about um roughly around 60% of your overall budget on brand building and marketing general marketing for for the university or for the institution that could involve you know getting events done bringing influencers in uh and influencers when i say they should be relevant influencers not just any random person just because they have a great face uh so they need to be relevant influencers at the same time you know what sort of events that you're doing what sort of value add conferences that i'm doing on campus off campus so that could be your brand building activities uh pr again if you wish to engage within that uh that becomes 60 60% of the entire thing the remaining 40% that 40% should get into your outreach marketing outreach and admissions budget which could also involve your uh, investments in terms of you know crm is in terms of the standardized cost that you need uh, outside of just going and meeting people in general so that that bifurcation you'll have to do and you'll have to have two different teams focus on that you can't have the same person doing general marketing and admissions marketing admissions requires a very different skill very different understanding more understanding of how my parent and student are also thinking and i think that's necessary uh, i'm just going to look at any tips for cambridge igcse education how is it different from other boards shivangi i'm not sure uh, you know what is the difference that yeah like you're looking at differences in terms of the curriculum or uh, in terms of you know building an outreach strategy whichever way if you could just be a little more clear on the same as a parent or um, you know as as any other person wanting to invest within the cambridge uh, board education for your child i think all of the boards today have uh, as a counselor okay so from our cambridge board perspective or from let's say a cbse within the indian context obviously there are more uh, you know there are more number of students subscribing to a cbse isc sort of thing in my personal experience um, i find our cbse isc kids to be extremely sharp and you know very street smart they pick up things very well the ib curriculum um is a little more attuned towards helping the students go through multiple you know diverse experiences and then combining them igcsc is a little stressful uh, in terms of uh, you know the the standards that they've set for the students to go ahead and clear through as well definitely it has its own benefits in terms of the depth in which it goes for multiple subjects you can still combine uh, but again as a counselor if you're looking at um, wanting to go and tap a cambridge board school then i think that will completely align with what your programs are that is necessary you understand from a cambridge or an igcsc uh, students perspective the sort of quality the sort of uh, thought process that they are used to they are not people who are going to look at a very vanilla program so if you have some program that can actually help them ameliorate a lot of them also try and understand what are their uh, you know what are their what are their focus areas after undergrad after undergrad what is the pathway that they want to take up do they want to take up an academic placement or do they want to take up a professional placement professional placements are morely the outcomes based in cbse isc i've seen that uh, mostly with ib and igcse students uh, my experience has been that their 
outcomes are mostly academic placements. So if it is academic placements, they want to go for masters to an Ivy League college or any of the good colleges, then you should be able to also identify universities. Or if you're a university counselor, then you need to identify that your programs are strong enough uh, to help that child get that outcome. And then maybe you can pitch uh, them for the same. So I hope that answers your question as well. Shujra, any other questions as well? Yes. We have other questions. So, uh, we aspire EdTech Private Limited, Narayana IIT, NEET Academy, and think they have uh, similar questions with mm -hmm. regards to how to increase uh, center admissions, how to increase the enrollment, and how to attract Gen Z students. <laughs> there is no one set because uh, all of the organizations that you've mentioned have students from a very different background. I used to work in test prep earlier. Uh, I've done a stint with EdTech as well. And I think everywhere the student profile is very different. So there's no one set rule key and you know, this is what we do and this is how the numbers will, will increase. Um, uh, with my experience, I can say that in test preps, where we have, you know, more courses are focused on, let's say, you know, CVT or a CAT exam, if you're looking at the management side or any of these uh, exams. Um, one strategy that has helped us is to focus on very, very uh, strong faculty delivery within the centers, as well as add-ons that we give. So I used to work with an organization called IMS Learning Resources for quite some time. And we used to specialize in training students for CAD, GMAT, GRE, multiple other management entrances, CVTs, and so on and so forth as well. Uh, but, you know, some of the things that really worked for us was that when we used to have a center operations, we would give a lot of add-ons. Like, no other center is giving you an extra foreign language to be learned. Let me add that into your profile as well. And the faculty was top-notch. So the service quality was very, very high. And therefore, that is, I think, uh, important. And of course, if that is taken care of, your results automatically come. And they automatically get into... If, if any of you is a CAT trainer or an MBA entrance exam trainer, you'd agree with me that when we see the kid the first day and maybe one week of observation, we can actually judge whether that kid will get an IM admit or will not get an IM admit. So accordingly, you can balance it out. But if you're looking at EdTech, a lot of places that I've seen is that um, if it's a program that you're selling, which is only your brand, it doesn't have an affiliate brand, it doesn't have a larger brand, so, for example, uh, let's take Upgrad as an uh, you know as an example. Now, if Upgrad is selling a program which is a MICA program, or is selling a program which is let's say a top-notch university's program, it's easier sale, right? So, there the uh, strategy to attract students is more to focus on quality delivery and the type of programs. What is the value add? What is the course curriculum that course curriculum has to be very strong but if i'm looking at an upgrade selling a program which is xyz university or xyz institution jo koi janta bhi nahi hai, no one else knows as well about it there i think one of the ways in which you can attract is with pricing strategies so with every field it will differ and i think that requires a much more deep dive uh, and an understanding of your user case who's your user uh, one very good way in which I feel that uh, has helped me a lot in past years has been to conduct a user study before I launch a program or before I get into, uh, you know, the year long outreach, building a strategy for it as well. So even if I can go and muster up maybe 50 students of my profile. So if you're a test prep company, if you're in, you know, IIT training company or likewise, Pick up maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 students who are of that profile. Do a survey on questions that you want to know about. Do a survey on what is the value add that they think. That survey really, and people from different backgrounds, not just from tier one cities, tier one, tier two, tier three cities as well. So if you can do that survey, those results will also give you a certain way to go ahead and uh, build your strategy accordingly. So we have another question from... An anonymous attendee. What is the mm -hmm. maximum result oriented? School, School visit visits or online, online marketing. I'm just checking up how we can generate regular follow-ups to students after school visits or sessions. Um, again, anonymous attendee, the maximum result orientation will be from brand to brand as well. It is not very specific. There are a lot of us. We've been able to, in my past, I've been able to churn out very good results from school visits as well. But then school visits, it's not that I went, I met them, I did a career fair and I came back and I forgot about it. 
there's a lot of follow up activities that we do uh, like i had mentioned in that matrix as well that you know you can create university taster programs you can create internships um for these students so that is the follow up that you need for students or for anything the follow up doesn't need to be necessarily on call but it will have to be a combination of both your physical as well as digital bit digital is easier for sure because a better better aapke pas leads aa jate hain uh, right so you get your leads but uh, digital is also the conversion rates are highly highly i mean they're very very limited so you need like a bulk of leads and you need a really large team to call all of them and then figure out ki usme conversion itna sahi aayega uh, more efficiency and visibility i would suggest that the physical bit is fine if you can do a combination of both nothing like it so if you're if you're working with digital leads online marketing you get a certain set of leads you get a certain set of applications or you identify that out of 1000 leads 200 of them are really interested in my program can i uh, you know can i um, add a benefit there maybe look out what are these cities from and plan a small visit to that city and have a coffee meet i don't even need to do you know elaborate session info session wo sab kuch nahi karna chota sa coffee meet there are 100 people in one city maybe you'll get 10 20 people but those conversations will be much more engaged and conversion timelines will be much more shorter so i hope that answers your question as well whoever is the anonymous attendee any other questions any other questions mm okay jona says that anything in specific that you advise in career counseling all right uh jona i think it's it's helpful to build a persona it's very helpful to build a persona and if you can build that as a part of your counseling process as well which has a few questions so what are my general questions that we talk to a student about a obviously uh, you know what sort of interest that they have you know which is the area of interest for sure uh, then questions like what is their background what is their family do because then you also get to know that what is the sort of environment that the child has grown up in uh, for example uh, you know i'm again taking the case of a business program if i'm looking at business as a program and if the kid says that um i want to do design maybe that's out of the child's interest but i also know in the back of the mind that the kid is from a family business background the conversation that the kid has actually grown up is a business background so there are higher chances that if she doesn't convert for business or convert for design maybe she also has an pension to go ahead and get into business or can i give a combination of the both uh, you know two programs so what sort of family background they come from what sort of city is it a catchment area for me is it an area so i am a university rishi who is based out of sonipat right uh, in the north now if i am talking to a lead or if i am talking to a student who is based out of salem now if the kid is extremely focused and absolutely has clarity on what my program offerings are and thinks that this is the best way possible for her to go ahead and get a career option then she will shift if she is an average student the way that we meet you know tens and thousands of students across all of our careers if she is an average student i can bet my life on it she is not going to go from salem to sonipat just for a program one or cases are exceptions not the rule so we have to think through questions in that point but most of our helpful questions have been of course in terms of their family backgrounds what motivated them to choose a certain program what motivated them to even enquire with me you know why are you looking at a program with rishihood i'm very happy that you're doing that but what is it that actually called out to you so i think those three four questions you can build different personas uh, personas can be in the sense that i have one persona for child who is uh, an academic achiever right there are people who are interested in a certain type of program and therefore this is my high intent audience so i have a persona some probing questions built for that then i have one persona let's say which says that um i have a child who wants to get into a very good institution but he doesn't want to get into the rat race of an iit so if you have a tech program then you know that boss okay fine you can come in through my if he is convinced about your program he is more legit to go ahead and join you rather than actually going to an iit je wala coaching and do all of that part as well so that becomes one persona so you can develop multiple personas bases on your conversations bases on whatever notes that your counselors may have written earlier as well and once you've designed that have three or four of these personas set onto your crm itself so that every time a counselor picks up a call or every time your counselor actually takes up 
the counselor needs to have an sop that boss you are supposed to ask x y z questions these three or four or five questions what's your family background where are you from why are you looking at the program what are your interest areas um what are the things that you've done to expose yourself more to university life so you understand these five six questions so you understand also the intent of the student once that picture is ready then you can bucket him okay fine ye wo bachcha hai jisko padhai zyada nahi karna you know he doesn't want to study too much he's just looking for an easy option or this is one kid who's genuinely interested in my program and is wanting to come this is a student who is looking only at a university which is close by home so therefore he's maybe also looking at me this is a particular student who is referred by an influencer by their coaching ka sir someone else etc etc therefore is applying to me so i think that necessarily also helps you with your outcome uh, you know when you mapping your outcomes at the end of a quarter and again i hope that helps um okay shivana thank you so much as well um i personally do a lot of sessions uh, you know on and off not just for professionals but for students as well you can just easiest ways to just follow me on linkedin as well or you know just connect with me on linkedin i keep typing in a lot of things there and i'd love to sort of take it up from there as well all right i guess uh, shrijana do we have any other offline questions as well and one more question before we wrap it up mm -hmm. it is yes, from yes, yes. bheem reddy digital yes. reddy and he is the digital manager marketing manager mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. looking for new strategies and explore more in paid marketing and also new ways Mm -hmm. understand the pulse of audience and what he wants to know how ai is influencing the current marketing strategies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ai the big bang dinosaur <laughs> that we all of us have on our head um okay we must so uh, interesting question uh one disconnect that I, and i've been a digital marketer for quite some time myself uh, i think one disconnect that i see uh between digital marketing and overall you know when we when we're not getting the outcomes that we have is there's no on ground understanding it's very easy for a digital marketer to sit down and say okay fine our outreach strategy you're planning to build in this is what your target audience is what is my target audience age group between 15 to 25 or whatever it is like uh, these are the locations that i'm looking at so i'm going to drive through campaigns there fine um that is nice and that is that is the standard practice that you have to do but i feel that every digital outreach manager should also take out the time to go at least for some on ground events whether it's fairs whether it's school sessions and talk to students more talk to your audience more because it's only then that you will realize that the content needs that they have you know the sort of content that i need to portray on my digital ads needs to be so much more different than just saying admissions open for 24 please come and apply that's not going to happen so the content that they are looking for is very very different and some bit of you know understanding of that sort of mapping should be done um how does how is ai helping or not helping us i think as universities and institutions in india we are yet to adopt ai you know not a lot of the us have and that's the reality of education in that sense we are yet to adopt ai we are yet to see ai actually changing the way that my child thinks in the indian education setup even today um we have more and more uh, you know decisions are still driven by parents and it's not necessarily up to date because the, you know, you understand the parents perspective as well they'll say okay fine anju jairaj you came to my uh, child school and you told him that boss you can turn your passion into a profession fine and you can go ahead and do maybe uh, you can become a designer you can become a graphic designer you can become a game designer because he's interested in design is my society is the society actually equipped enough to give that child a sustained career in game design and not just for two or three years that's what your parents are going to talk to you about that's what your parents are going to come back with you about right so um, yes ai has a lot of influence in the type of content that the child is consuming whether it's on instagram whether it is on whichever places but i don't think that it still has a hold on uh, the sort of decision uh, making that is being done so you you can use multiple ai tools there are so many you know automated bots that people are using now we use a lot of automated stuff so that information can flow out very smoothly you know newsletters information uh, the way that we want to build it maybe once in a week once in two weeks so you can use all of that there also use ai to sort of map in as to how your consumer is thinking those insights are very valuable 
uh, how they're interacting with your posts how much are they are they liking your post are they resharing your post uh, you know i don't think views is a good uh, metric at all a lot of digital marketers come in and tell me oh anju we did some 10 lakh impression post that doesn't matter that all for me right now what matters to me is if, if it's a facebook post uh, or it's a linkedin post have someone reshared it then i know that the quality it's it's struck with someone that they have reposted that post or they've reshared it fine if they've just simply viewed and simply scrolled there's no meaning for that so it's there but not too much so i don't think we need to we need to we we don't need to worry about it we need to find more solutions in which we can integrate it within our entire thing you know you, can i use more ai in terms of the engagement activities that i'm creating i think that's something that even as a digital marketer you need know, to think of can i use more ai in term, in terms of showcasing my campus to the student in a very lively manner why should the student have to come all the way down to the campus can he get a complete immersive experience if you can integrate ai that way i think that really helps you in terms of you know building your entire thing now i have one last question here how to attract students for the core branches navneet uh, i'm guessing from core you're looking at engineering uh, if it's engineering well it's a whole different ball game altogether i'll need like another 2 hours to deco that bit for sure that's one market that is here is there to stay uh, and unfortunately for a lot of core branches like you know mechanical and so many others we are seeing a redundancy uh, considering the sort of job markets that we have but i think that's a deeper discussion and i'd love to you know probably take it up with you separately off uh, off the session as well please do connect with me on linkedin i'm going to try and see if i can just put down my linkedin id on the chat box for you know ease of access for all of you all uh for someone who's a digital marketer i'm terribly bad at technology to move around here and there as well just one minute okay yes my linkedin ids are on the chat box you can please do connect with me and i'd love to take it up uh, here in the future as well thank you so much uh should i'll have to go because i have another session in 10 minutes but if there are any other questions that you do receive uh, please do share with me and i'd love to uh, you know probably answer them individually later on yes sure sure ranju thank you thank you so much thank you everyone who attended the webinar <laughs> especially yeah, so our much. marketing team as well thank you biplav thank you thank, thank you so you. much thank you so much yeah. lovely meeting thank you. you thank you yeah thank you bye bye